In this example, we're going to use Dask Distributed to parallelize an ad hoc computation. In particular, we're going to look at building a distributed random forest on the New York City taxicab dataset using scikit-learn. As of today, there's no Dask scikit-learn integration, so we're going to have to use this. We're going to have to build this by hand. Turns out that's going to be just fine, uh, largely because scikit-learn is so powerful, and because Dask Distributed allows you to do ad hoc computations. These are computations that you can build. Uh, fairly easily using normal for loops, submitting tasks on, on your own. Uh, as, an, as our learning objective, thing we're going to try to do, our application, we're going to try to predict the passenger counts given other columns like fare and distance. Uh, but again, our actual objective is just to show how to use Dask distributed with computations that don't look like uh, a Dask array or a Dask data frame. Computations that tend to be a little bit more specialized and custom, which end up coming up pretty often in the wild. Uh, as a disclaimer, um, I don't know very much machine learning, and so the algorithms that I'm choosing to implement here aren't actually very good, and we'll see why. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead with it as a computational example. So here we're downloading the uh, New York City Taxicab dataset as a bunch of pandas data frames onto our cluster from S3. We've used this collection equals false keyword argument to ask the cluster to not give us a, um, a task data frame, but to instead give us uh, a bunch of pandas data frames. So these pandas data frames come to us as a list of futures. So here I'm pulling out the first 10 elements of that, of that list. And we see that these are futures, which means that they are tokens to some result that's living somewhere on the cluster. We're actually not sure where. They're of type pandas data frame, and we have many of these. So if we pull just one pandas data frame from somewhere on the cluster uh, to the local machine, we can do that with this result method. So dfs of zero is one of these futures. And the future has a result method that brings the data from the cluster to local machines. So you can look at it. So let's look at just you know a little bit of that. So now we have a pandas data frame in memory, and we can see the standard New York City taxicab data set. Uh, and our objective again is to try to predict this column, this passenger count column, from all of these other numeric columns, things like trip distance. Maybe we find that if you have five people in the car, they're more likely to go longer. Um, and it looks like this data set is going from about mid-January to about the end of January. So again, there are many different data frames. There's about 170 of them. Let's look at that throughout the cluster. Uh, and we're just looking at one small one here. So let's just start with scikit-learn for a bit on a single machine. It's always best to prototype things on a single machine. And this is going to be what we're going to do on a distributed cluster as well. But So we're going to create a random forest classifier with four trees. Then we're going to fit uh, that, that classifier uh, using just a few of these columns. These in particular are the, the numeric columns of the data set, trying to predict the passenger count. That takes around 11 seconds, or 10 seconds. Um, and it gives us a result, you know, an estimator, that we can use to predict other data. So here we've split our single data frame into two different data frames, training and testing data. We've trained on the training data, and now we're scoring our data set on the testing data. And we find we get about 65% accuracy. So that means that our estimator is predicting around 65% of the time is predicting the right number of passengers given all of these other columns. Okay. You might think it's actually not that bad, but uh, in particular, there are so many cab rides with a single uh, passenger that if you, just ex if you just have a very simple model of always guessing one, you actually end up doing a little bit better than this very complex random forest. So I guess a random forest, or how I, I'm doing random forest in this case, isn't, isn't particularly good. Um, so we're not going to get any better than, than the naive approach. Uh, so the whole exercise from here on out is just a computational one, not one of machine learning. Hopefully someone who knows more machine learning can correct my mistakes and suggest some better models. So we just did this on a single machine. Let's go ahead and do this on a full cluster. So again, recall that we have 178 of these pandas data frames scattered about our cluster. And now we're going to do exactly what we just did on a single machine. We're going to create a new classifier, and then fit that classifier like with these columns to the passenger count uh, column. And we're going to use the executor.map function to map that just created function onto all of our training data frames. These training data frames, we're going to use actually all of the data frames except for the last one. And we're going to test on the last one. So we're going to hold out a single data frame at the end. Uh, there are better ways to do this, but for the purposes of today, this, this, will, be, this will suffice. Um, so as an example, so over here on the right, we're seeing the Dask web UI. And it's nice to look at as I'm working on the notebook. Um, 
So we can see here up at the top, we have a progress bar showing all the things that are, that are happening, that are in memory, that we've computed, uh, and as they progress. And at the bottom here, we're seeing all the tasks that come in uh, as they finish. So all of these uh, fit tasks are taking you know, around 25 seconds or so, and they're being parallelized across our 48 cores. Okay. I'm going to pause the recording for a bit. We're going to come back. It looks like it's going to take another minute. Okay, so we're close to done. Let's just keep going. So as we recall that this test object is a pandas data frame living somewhere in the cluster, and we want to actually replicate that out to uh, all of our different computations. So this is um, all of our different workers. So this test data frame is living just on one normally, but we're going to want to test our, all of our estimators that we've just trained with this same data set. So for performance reasons, we're going to scatter it out ahead of time. In the meantime, we've also just gone and run predictions on all of our data sets. So uh, this is actually was a nice example of seeing how Dash Distributed is totally asynchronous. So we had a computation running up in this cell. We were still able to work in the notebook and do some work. And they actually start up a totally different computation in this cell, and all the computations intermingled well. So what did we just do? We just used the submit function from the executor to submit this predict task, this predict function. We're just going to take an estimator and a testing data set, and it's going to pr predict the outcomes. Uh, so the number of passenger counts for any, every given row. And we're just going to call that in a standard list comprehension. So we don't have to use map. We can use normal for loops list comprehension. It's called the submit call. Um, and this is going to give us now for every estimator, and we've trained 178 of these estimators off of all the different parts of our data set. This is going to give us what that estimator thinks the passenger counts will be for our test data set. So every estimator has its own independent guess as to what's, what's going to happen. And now we need to have some way of aggregating those guesses. So we have 178 different guessers. How do we use all those predictions to come up with one single guess that we trust the most? So one of those predictions, we're going to use this result method to gain, to gain one thing back. Uh, so one of these predictions looks a little bit like this. You know, for the first ride, they're expecting there to be one passenger. For the second ride, you know, maybe there was a longer distance or something, so two passengers. And the different predictions, the different estimators, will have different results. So this, this estimator is guessing that at least these six entries, they're all going to be a single, um, they're all going to be a single passenger. So one way to aggregate all these different predictions together is to allow them to vote and take them and take the majority vote. So we're going to compute the mode of all of these arrays. So here I'm making a small mode function using the scipy stats mode function. Uh, and that's going to, so if you take, let's say, four predictions, so we're going to use the gather method here to gather four futures and, give, and get four actual results in our local process. And so we have here four different futures, um, sorry, four different results now. And we see that, you know, for, the, for this first ride, three of our estimators thought that there was just one passenger and one estimator thought that there was two passengers. And so we're going to compute the mode and, you know, the, you know, the majority three went out over the the minority of just one person. Um, and in this case, and as in many cases we'll see, uh, we end up averaging to all ones. Um, so we have 178 different um, predictions, prediction arrays, and we're going to, to combine them uh, in steps. So we're going to take the first 10 and we're going to combine those to make one prediction, and the second 10 we're going to make those to make a new mode prediction. And then once all of those are finished, we're going to mode those again in sort of a tree reduction. So we've, we've coded it up here, again, just using this submit function uh, in a doubly nested loop. So we've got a list comprehension here uh, sitting inside of a while loop. Uh, so this is you know, an example of not just a simple map computation, but actually something quite a bit more complex, uh, where we're you know, doing a lot of interesting logic in between. And that's actually run fairly fast, uh, because moving these predictions around is pretty cheap, and computing this mode is pretty cheap. And on the right here, we're seeing that each of the mode computations takes about 140 milliseconds. And these red bars are the, the transfer costs. So it costs around 240 milliseconds to transfer all of the different uh, arrays to the machine that's actually going to compute the mode for us. And so we see here sort of a mix of computation and, and communication costs. Uh, but you know, in the end, we did sort of this complex computation in you know, a couple of seconds, which was, which was pleasant. And now we've actually averaged together all of our predictions, and we can look at it. Um, and so now we're going to score our final predictions against the total passenger count column for our test data. So this is actually the ground truth. We actually know what this is. Uh, and we get the answer of about 67% accuracy. 
So this is still worse than always just guessing one. Um, so, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of great machine learning. I suspect that a machine learning expert could tell us why. Uh, but we did do some fun computations, uh, in particular some interesting computations that would be difficult to do with an you know, embarrassingly parallel map. So let's look a little bit into why we're getting such a bad result very briefly. So if we look at just the frequencies of this result, we see that the average computation is almost always guessing one. Um, and you know, a couple of times I guess it's 20. But uh, it's just there are so many single passenger rides in this data set that the mode very often squashes out uh, you know, the sort of the few minority people who are guessing, oh, there are maybe three passengers. If you look at just any one particular prediction, you see they actually have a much richer uh, guess. So it's actually a case where maybe the way we're aggregating is, is destroying some information. Okay, so in conclusion, you've seen a few things. We've seen how to use uh, some fairly simple functions inside the DAS distributed task API, things like submit and map and gather, also functions like result. Uh, to manage small functions and submit small, small functions onto the cluster using just basic for loops. So you don't have to use a big collection like DAS bag or DAS array or DAS data frame. You can just dump a whole lot of fancy custom tasks that all depend on each other into the scheduler, and the scheduler will handle it just fine. Uh, we did see that our machine learning algorithms could definitely use some improvement. And in particular, if, any, if there's anybody out there who has some improvements, please you know send a comment. Uh, finally, I'd like to point out that this entire workflow can be replicated very easily. So you can spin up a cluster with Dash distributed on it and running with this DEC2 project. So that's that's on GitHub, and you can pip install DEC2. Um, and then also the data set was also fully public. So the data set here is living in this uh, bucket, Dask data, and this notebook will also be available. So that's it. Uh, and again, we saw using DAS distributed uh, without any collections, just more of a, in a manual way to do some interesting machine learning. Okay, thank you for your time.